Thank you. Okay. Now, I've spent my career affecting how information impacts every aspect of our life and every aspect of business. And there's no more exciting time to be doing that than right now. Information affects everything. It affects our healthcare. It affects our finances. It affects all the life choices that are going to be presented to you. It cannot be overstated how important the accumulation of vast sums of information about each and every one of us out there is. 10 years ago, who would have imagined that every square foot of the planet would be photographed and made widely available in 3D? And also, who would have imagined that we would be, become so willing to give up such personal information in public and quasi-public forums like Facebook, Twitter, and Foursquare? How much data are we talking about? Well, the Earth generated around four zettabytes of information in 2013. And according to IDC, we're on our way to 40 zettabytes by 2020. Now, this data is not just stored once. It's stored all over the world in numerous databases. Just about every place that data can be used, it's being stored somewhere out there. So it's actually increasing exponentially. In the last few years, we have generated more information than we ever have in all of history. And it's machines that are primarily responsible for this increase. Machine data is the fastest growing and most complex, most valuable area of big data. Now, this gives us the ability to do unprecedented triangulation of the physical world because we're learning so much more about the physical world through sensors and click streams and things like that. So it's machines that are responsible for big data. And it's collecting content on a lot of things, including all of us. Unlike traditional structured data, big data is much more complicated. It, it comes in a variety of forms, and it comes at a velocity that we're really not that used to. But it contains valuable information. Each of these underlying customer touch systems contains millions of data points every day about the finer intricacies of a transaction. And when we look more closely, we can see that it's actually pretty important information. Customer ID, order ID, time waiting on hold, the Twitter ID, what that person tweeted. With this kind of information, when we look more closely, we see that we can correlate and visualize related events. And we can get to not only the activity, not only the behavior, but also the experience. And we can do this in real time. The information is accumulating in real time, such that if a company understands what to do with that information and how to respond to it, they can have such an advantage in the marketplace. Now, this use case can be extrapolated all over the place, right? Security and audits, transaction processing systems, web-based analytics, all manner of IT operations does this. Now, we are on the way to 50 billion connected devices by the year 2020. Internet Protocol 6 will allow for 78 octillion, that's billion, 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 simultaneous connections. So many things are connected to the internet now that we don't even realize. And so much more of the physical world, it's on its way to having an IP address and being online. The internet is about to swell from the size of a relative baseball to the size of the entire planet. We have things like the pill cam, which takes continuous pictures of us from the inside. And that's part of a growing number of applications that is actually doing that and transforming our physical characteristics. There's the body tail and the gluco tail. There's the eye health oximeter, which does no sting blood measurements. There are trash cans that inform when they are at a certain uh, level of fullness and need to be replaced. And this is part of a growing set of applications out there that is actually changing the entire workforce. And I have more to say on, on that in a little while. Vending machines that recognize who you are, recognize your physical characteristics, make some calculations about it, and then recommend what people like you prefer. 
and also what, of course, they would like you to think about uh, buying from that machine at that time. There's the Modi cam that captures everything a microscope looks at. There's the Body Guardian, which allows physicians to monitor your biometrics around the clock. Transportation companies accumulate a vast amount of big data. For example, Union Pacific get, does 20 million sensor readings a day. And this spots 1,500 issues in their network. Now, this doesn't just inform, oh, it's time to replace a part. It informs the entire operation. Big data is transforming this company and transforming so many companies. It affects things like even pricing and routes and staffing. Not just is it time to replace a part in the engine. Companies that can harness this information are going to do so much better in the marketplace. We're already seeing that. We're also already seeing that industries that can transform themselves using big data are also going to do so much better than other industries as well. We're already seeing that. It's gotten to the point where the information is more important than the actual transaction. So yes, a transaction is nice, but it's actually more important to a lot of companies. The fact that you would buy that something at that point in time in that store, that piece of information can be more valuable to them than the fact that you did that transaction because there's a robust third-party data marketplace out there that that data can go into. And furthermore, that transaction affects a lifelong relationship if you know what to do with the information. This is related to Mark Andreessen's claim that software eats the world. And I like to say data eats the world because no matter what industry you're in, no matter what business you're in, you are in the business of information. It doesn't matter if you have fast supply chains and wonderful everyday low prices and wonderful customer service. Those are all tickets to entry into business today. Yeah, it's great that you have them, but companies are competing based upon their information. Companies need to have more data, better data, more performing data, and more better managed data than their competition in order to succeed today. We simply can't afford not to store the data if a business should be using that information for competitive advantage. Consider an airplane engine. This can generate terabytes of information every few seconds. A transatlantic flight now generates 650 terabytes of data that's actually used today. It'll be more in the future. This looks at every aspect of the engine. Every component in that engine is sensor-based now. And what sensors throw off are things like proximity to everything else, uh, temperature, uh, air pressure, of course time, of course location. These sorts of things inform the entire operation of the airline today. Again, it's the routing, the staffing, the pricing. All this is based upon this kind of big data. It starts in the engine with the sensors in the engine. That's real big data at work. Consider this. Truck-based asset delivery customer was taking 19.6 hours for a certain delivery corridor. By looking at big data, big traffic data, we were able to determine that each day of the week has a different optimal departure time. And if that truck left at the optimal departure time, it would reduce the route by 48%, and of course the transportation costs as well. You simply can't afford to ignore this type of data in the real world today. If you miss this, this data, you're actually adding over 100% uh, to the route, something pretty important to them. But when you have an abundance of something, your relationship with that something changes. Back in the Industrial Revolution, we changed the jobs over from industrial to, well, from agriculture, really, to manufacturing. And we're seeing the same thing happen today with data. Every data is becoming a data-centric job. It's not just the IT jobs, it's every job. Every job that has any sort of meaningful value that society was placing upon that is going to be better served by incorporating more and more information into that job. Gone are the days when the data would drop every month and that data would be the data used for the next month. Today, if you want to have a robust career, if you want to rise in your career, you have to absorb more information into that job, or it will become devalued. 
And this information is coming at you from a variety of places, and it's coming at you in a lot of different forums. But there will be mistakes on this journey. Our personal proclivities in psychographics are now in the hands of private hands. Private hands. Sort of. They have a jaded view as to what that is. There are a rich amount of third-party curators of information out there today. If something can be monetized, it will. But this whole thing is in its infancy. It requires the cooperation of the app developers, sometimes you and I that are implicated in this, as well. Are you a cigar smoker? Well, you did subscribe to Cigar Aficionado magazine. Do you have horses? Well, you do live on a lot zoned for horses. You get the point. There are thousands of scores being calculated on us all the time with this kind of imprecise data. But the ability to anticipate your next move based upon your characteristics is so important to business that they are pushing ahead really strong right now. The ability simply to identify you and remind you what your last purchase was, like they did in the movie Minority Report, that's only the tip of the iceberg as to how people are going to be treated in this information revolution. It's a wild west of data out there right now. Our loose digital cues are becoming sacrosanct in the mad rush to identify us and treat us like individuals. So there's going to be errors along the way. But business has repeatedly shown that it is willing to take these kinds of chances. So the question becomes, what other data can it use? Well, what about DNA data? I think this is really emblematic of the data that uh, corporations would really like to have. Because inherent within it is just about, well, everything. Now, we're not there. And I'm not sure that ship has to sail, really, for the whole human experience to actually change as a result of information. We're starting to see that a while. So we're a ways off from that, but do know that the technology is there for all businesses to store and manage and analyze all the data it could use, and then some. I couldn't have said this five years ago, but the economics have changed, the tools have changed, the frameworks have changed, the technology is there. So again, the question becomes, what data could it use? That's it. There's clear upward trends of spending on big data. As a matter of fact, it's the top item of projected spend in many industries. Most businesses simply have to admit that no matter what business they're in, they're in the business of information. And that is the basis for competitive advantage. Again, all those other things I mentioned, tickets to entry into business today. If you're focused on them, great. Focus on the bigger picture. That picture is big data. And that is where business is going today. So data is valuable. It gives business the view that it needs in order to self-correct and treat us like individuals. The adoption has driven increases in hardware and increases in software, but there is a dark side. Data misinterpretation, data misrepresentation, hacking is at an all-time high. All Internet of Things devices are susceptible. But the truth of, the, of your data is not the worst fear. The worst fear is that we all understand the grand scale of the data collection. And we place implicit trust in that process. It is going to be very hard to challenge a supposed data-informed label. And that is the worst fear. So we are in the data economy, and it is the next natural resource. But unlike other natural resources, every business must have a relationship with this one. And it's not entirely clear what that relationship needs to be. We're trying to figure it out in earnest. And I hope we keep the balance in favor of the human experience. We will not run out of data, but we may be overwhelmed by it. Thank you.